Now that we've covered the basic causes of tube failure, let's go over some of the types of tube failures and deformities. Deformities are irregularities in the tube metal that can lead to tube failure. First, let's examine different kinds of failures that cause leaks. The first type is a rupture. There are three kinds of ruptures, thin-lipped, thick-lipped, and double-ended. Thin-lipped ruptures are usually caused by sudden and severe overheating. They look something like a burst bubble. The open lips are uniformly tapered to sharp, knife-like edges. There is no evidence of cracking or irregular tearing of the metal in a thin-lipped rupture. Now, thick-lipped ruptures are caused by milder but more prolonged overheating. This kind of overheating is often caused by deposits on the inside of the tube. Thick-lipped ruptures resemble thin-lipped ruptures, except that their edges are thicker and more ragged, as you can see here. This kind of rupture is common to superheater tubes. Double-end ruptures are also caused by overheating. Here, the tube separates completely at the point of failure, leaving two free ends. Three more failures you may run across are fatigue cracks, tearing of tube metal at weld patches, and the tearing of tube metal at support clip attachments. Fatigue cracks are caused by mechanical stress. They appear as clean, bright breaks through the tube. Tearing of the tube metal at weld patches is also caused by mechanical stress. This occurs when the weld patch and the tube expand or contract at different rates. Contraction can stress the metal so severely that it tears open. This kind of failure can mean that the wrong kind of material was used for welding the patch. Tearing of tube metal at support clip attachments is also caused by expansion and contraction. Support clips are brackets that are welded to some tubes to help hold them in place. If tubes that are held together by support clips expand or contract unevenly, a tube may be torn open where the clip is welded to the tube. Thermal cracks, sometimes called creep cracks, are another type of tube failure. Prolonged mild overheating or repeated short time overheating creates thermal cracks. The cracked wall will have a normal thickness, but the crack itself will have a dark crystalline appearance. Another type of failure, pinhole leaks, can result from overheating, corrosion, erosion, mechanical stress, or mechanical defects. It looks like a small hole in the tube surface, but it goes through the entire tube wall. Often, a pinhole leak is the way a larger failure starts, so it can't be ignored just because it's small. Pinhole leaks allow steam or water to leave the tube in a concentrated stream. If this stream is directed against another tube, it will erode it, eventually producing a failure. This is called steam gouging. Steam gouging looks as though the metal has been blasted away and the resulting cavity polished. The cavity is extremely smooth and has an irregular shape. Now that we've talked about tube failures, let's take a look at some tube deformities. Deformities, as we said earlier, are irregularities in the tube metal that can lead to failure. The first two types of deformities we'll look at are tube enlargement and heat blisters. Both of these are caused by overheating. Tube enlargement is common in superheater tubes. It appears as a uniform enlargement of a portion of the tube. The overheating that causes it is milder than the temperatures responsible for ruptures and cracking. But if an enlarged tube stays in service, it will eventually rupture or crack. Heat blisters, also caused by overheating, only affect one side of the tube. Heat blisters always indicate the presence of waterside deposits. Waterside deposits insulate the tube from cooling flow and cause the tube to become overheated. The blisters are formed when a portion of the tube metal becomes so hot that it softens. We're going to slow this process down so you can see what happens. The pressure inside the tube causes it to bulge outward. As the tube bulges, the deposits inside break up allowing boiler water to cool the hot metal before the tube ruptures. The heat blister then appears as an egg-shaped lump or bulge in the tube. The last two types of irregularities we'll discuss are tube thinning and tube wall lamination. 
Tube thinning is caused by corrosion or erosion. It shows up as a general decrease in the wall thickness of the tube. As you can see here, the wall of the tube where my finger is on the top is much thinner than the tube wall at the bottom. Tube wall lamination is the most common example of material defects found in boiler tubes. A cross section of a laminated tube looks something like this. The lamination, or layering, occurs during fabrication of the tube. It will appear as cracks or breaks that go part way through the tube. We've now covered nine common types of boiler tube failure. Thin-lipped ruptures, thick-lipped ruptures, double-ended ruptures, fatigue cracks, tearing of tube metal at support clips, tearing of tube metal at weld patches, thermal cracks, pinhole leaks, and steam gouging. We've also gone over four tube deformities, enlargement, heat blisters, thinning, and lamination. You should be familiar with the causes of failures and deformities and what they look like. Now let's take a quick look at how they're repaired. The best and most sure way to repair failures and deformities is to replace the damaged section of tube. Although this is the best way, it isn't always possible because it's time consuming. There are several other methods that are used when there isn't enough time to replace a section of tube. These are cladding, closing a rupture, and window repair. Cladding is sometimes used to repair tube thinning. It's a technique used to thicken and strengthen a tube by applying weld metal to its surface. If there's a rupture in a tube, it can sometimes be repaired by forcing it closed and welding it. This type of repair is also clad to increase its strength. If a rupture cannot be closed, it's sometimes possible to perform a window repair. In this repair, the damaged area is cut out and replaced with a new piece. Selection of the type of repair will depend on the type of failure and the amount of time available to fix it. We'll see exactly how these repairs are performed in a few minutes, but right now take some time to go over the material on tube failures and deformities.